So I'll be conducting this review in a little bit different fashion than I have in the past. I didn't bother to film any cinematics or fancy b-roll, which honestly just took up a lot of time in the past. This time around, I spent a lot more time formulating and typing down my thoughts on my laptop. I didn't memorize any of this, so I'll be just kind of talking to you guys and going off of my notes. So I hope you enjoy it. Sorry if it's not super flashy. This is what the paddle looks like right out of the box. And right out of the box, you will immediately notice how light and well balanced this paddle feels. I had some of my other friends try the paddle too and they all said the same thing, that the paddle was really, really light. So another thing that I quickly noticed right out of the box is the surface grit. It is very gritty, but it's also really fine. So if you run your fingers across it, you can hear it. So the surface is raw carbon fiber. I'll get more into the technology of exactly which one this is, but it's very, very fine and very, very gritty. My fingers actually have a little bit of it shaved off from the grit of this. So something that I thought would be cool to give you guys a close look on is I have my phone set on 4K and I have it set on macro. So I'm gonna take a few photos here for you so you can kind of see an ultra close up look on the grit of this paddle. I'm gonna to try to take some photos on different uh, areas of the paddle. I know some paddles that you see can have different levels of grit based off of the location of the paddle, so it could be kind of inconsistent. So I'm gonna take a few here so you could kind of see uh, what it looks like. So as I'm running my fingers across the paddle, it actually reminds me really similar to the Project 006. Um, it has a very similar feeling to this specific surface. I would say it feels slightly uh, coarser um, than the Lab 006. The Lab 006 has extremely, extremely fine grit, whereas this one I'm noticing has slightly coarser grit, so it feels slightly rougher. And we'll get into the specs of that. I was really pleasantly surprised to find out that this was made in the US. I'm kind of sick of all the paddles these days coming out. They're all made in China. And honestly, I'm a little bit skeptical of like what paddles are just part of like the Chinese manufacturing catalog and a lot of companies claiming, oh, this is the new blah, blah, blah. I'm a little bit skeptical about, about that these days just because of how many paddle manufacturing companies in China there are. All right, so let's talk about the specs and techs of the Vanguard Control. So the Vanguard Control is available for $200. If you use my code EDU, you can get a free $20 store credit. The Vanguard Control comes in either a lightweight or a midweight. The lightweight has a range of 7.3 ounces to 7.6 ounces, and the midweight comes between 7.6 to 8.1 ounces. All right, so the Vanguard Control Invicta model has a handle length of 5.5 inches, which is slightly longer than the Lux, which is 5.35 inches. The Selkirk Lab 006 has a handle length of 5.75 inches. So out of all of these three, this is the longest, the Vanguard Control is medium, and the Lux is just barely, just a hair shorter. All three grip circumferences are exactly the same at 4.25 inches. So Selkirk said that they upgraded the Vanguard Control grip to an octagonal shape, but I'm looking at the Lux and it actually is like the same shape. They both have that octagonal pattern. I like the octagonal pattern because it makes it easier to find the which bevel you want your hand to line up with. Especially if you're using like Hesicore, the octagonal patterns match really well with this octagonal bevel. All right, so now let's talk about the important part, the surface and the core of the paddle. So according to Selkirk's description, this quad carbon fiber was originally designed in the US coming from the Lab 006. I still didn't quite understand what quad carbon fiber meant, so I tried to do some digging and here's what I found. The only thing I could find about the quad carbon fiber was from Selkirk Labs website about the 006. 
So the Lab 006 uses a raw 12K carbon fiber texture. Below that, it says patent pending Omnitech multi-layer carbon fiber face. This revolutionary layering system synergistically combines four layers of T700 carbon fiber. So that was like the only thing I could find online about quad carbon fiber. And as I'm reading more about the descriptions, it seems like a lot of the technology that Selkirk developed with the Lab 6 was directly translated into the Vanguard Control. Now, I don't know if the Vanguard Control is 12K carbon fiber, but it seems like this quad or four layer carbon fiber technology is in the control. Selker claims that this quad carbon technology gives more consistency and durability to the paddle, which I will talk about more in the performance section of this video. Okay, so for what's inside this paddle is the X5 core that Selkirk developed for the Lab 6. Now what's special about the X5 core is its ability to dampen vibration and increase the sweet spot. I've noticed that this was actually true for both the Lab 6 and the Vanguard control because this paddle is super good at making the ball feel muted on your paddle and you hardly feel any vibration when you hit the ball. This can be a good or a bad thing and I'll get to that in a second here. Okay, so let's talk about the performance. So I got to test out the lightweight model and the midweight model and I highly recommend the lightweight model. So the lightweight model, mine came in at 7.35 ounces. With the overgrip, it is 7.5 ounces, which is insanely light for having this already on there. The midweight paddle, even with the Hesicore grip and the U-drip overgrip, it comes in at 8.16 ounces. So with the lightweight, when I first moved it around in my hand, it felt so light that I was actually a little bit worried that I might not be able to hit hard and I might have an issue with the paddle twisting in my hands on block volleys. However, I was pleasantly surprised that this was not the case. In my volleys and my shots, the paddle does such a good job at deflecting the ball that it never really twisted in my hands at all, despite it being super light. So what it ended up feeling like was I could just put the ball anywhere quickly with my paddle and the ball would just bounce off the paddle really fast. So this paddle has a really nice crack and pop sound when you hit hard on the sweet spot of the paddle. And it reminded me really similar to the Engage MX Pro, which is this one here. This paddle is an awesome paddle and I'll do a quick sound test right now so you can hear the sound difference between this paddle and this paddle. I don't know how they did it, but a paddle this lightweight shouldn't be able to hit this hard, but somehow it does. I can probably put some tungsten tape on it to boost the swing weight a little bit, but to be honest, I don't really feel like I need to. Especially since the flick shot and backhand rolls are one of my favorite shots, I don't think swing weight actually benefits my playstyle that much. Plus, if I'm going for soft shots like drops and dinks, I actually prefer less weight so it feels like I'm just hitting with my hand and not my arm. Speaking of soft shots, I really do think that this paddle excels at hitting soft shots like dinks, drops, and resets. And I think a lot of that is due to the X5 core where it dampens the vibrations. It's really, really easy to have that ball stay on your paddle a little bit longer and you don't feel a lot of that vibration and shake from the paddle. So I mentioned earlier that this soft, reduced vibration feeling could be either a good thing or a bad thing. And I'll explain that right now. So having a soft paddle that reduces vibration can be a good thing if, for example, you have wrist pain or you have tennis elbow. If you have wrist pain or tennis elbow, I highly recommend you trying a paddle that reduces that vibration and absorbs that shock so that it doesn't go into all your ligaments. Now on the other side of the coin, if the paddle is really poppy and you can feel the vibrations, you do get a better sense of the ball, meaning that when you're hitting a ball, you can feel where the ball is landing on your paddle and you can adjust accordingly. The only downside of that is if you have tennis elbow or your wrist pain, you do absorb that, more, that shock into your arms rather than the paddle absorbing it itself. So that's a trade-off that you have to decide whether you want to preserve your arms a little bit more or you want more feel and touch to your paddle. 
So this trade-off brings me to my next point where I'm gonna compare paddles that are similar to this and I'm gonna talk about the price points. I'm very happy that Selkirk priced this actually cheaper than the paddles that I'm about to compare that feel similar to this paddle. The first one that comes to mind is the Engage MX 6.0. I tried my friends the other day actually and I really liked it. So much in fact that I actually bought one so that I could test it side by side with this paddle. So if you ever tried this paddle, which I highly recommend, this paddle has tons of pop, very lightweight, and it's just very intuitive to use. So I wanted to see how the Vanguard control stacks up with the Engage. So in my testings, I found that the lightweight version of the Vanguard control feels very similar to the Engage. The only difference is the control feels more muted and the vibrations are dampened because of the X5 core. Now again, that's the trade-off. This can either be a good thing or a bad thing. This is probably going to be better for most players, but some players who might want a bit more pop and a bit more feeling of the ball would prefer the Engage. So that's a trade-off that you're going to have to decide for yourself and play style. So ultimately, I would say the biggest differences between these two paddles, which I both really like, is you just don't feel the vibrations as much on the Vanguard control. You don't hear that really loud popping sound as much. Those actually look really nice. Oh. Ready? Is that in? Wow. So if you're looking for more pop and you want to hit louder, the, the, the Engage is going to do that for you. But I think for most people, people will probably prefer a quieter, more uh, soft control oriented paddle with the Vanguard control. So the other paddle that comes into mind is the Lab 006. Now this paddle was good, but it was $333. So no one could afford this paddle. And the other thing that this paddle had the downfall of was it was too heavy. This paddle came in at 8.7 ounces if I remember. And while I love the feeling and control that I had from this paddle, the spin was amazing, everything was great, except this paddle was 8.7 ounces, which is absolutely nuts. I put lead tape on mine, I don't even know why I did, and the final weight of this paddle is 9.2 ounces. I think the only people in the world who, who weight their paddles to that height is like Ben Johns or Deckel Bar. Like, Unless you're like a top level pro with insane wrist strength, 9.2 ounces is just way too heavy. So my comparison is, yes, the Vanguard control feels very similar to the Lab 006. However, it's like two ounces lighter and it's also $130 cheaper. So, I mean, not to throw any shade, but I'm thinking, why would anyone purchase a 006 anymore? You could always add on a tungsten tape, but you can't take away weight from a paddle. So that's just my two cents on why I think the Vanguard Control is just straight up an upgraded version of the Lab 006. Hey, so I was editing this and I forgot to add this part in, but I want to touch a little bit about the durability of the uh, surface. As you can see, I've been using this paddle for a few days and there's like quite a bit of buildup on the surface of the paddle here. Um, if this happens to your paddle and you see this, that's not the paddle actually wearing out. That's just plastic being caught into the grooves of the paddle, the little weaves. Um, but if you use something like this, Selkirk sell these, sells these like eraser blocks. Um, you could also buy uh, some of these on Amazon, um, they're pretty cheap. But what you can do is you can erase and pull off that ball debris on the paddle. So I'll show you what that looks like here. I'll just do this very lightly. This will take like three seconds. So I just do a couple passes and just to pick off that plastic ball debris. And I'll show you before and after, but you don't even have to go super hard, just very, very lightly. Rub that in and then just like wipe it on like some cloth. I just wipe it on my pants. This is before, all right, and this is the after. Shabla! <laughs> what the heck, it's just like a brand new paddle. Um, so yeah, I just want to add that part in because these are quite durable, way more durable than the um, like paint grit that the Lux uses. Raw carbon fiber is definitely uh, the way to go for durability. 
but you can make it go from this to this and still have that. Make sure to go pick up one of these, uh, clean your paddle before you play so you get maximum grip. All right, so for this last part of the video, I wanna talk about the modifications that I'm using for my paddle. I wanted to do my due diligence. I wanted to test this paddle completely stock with nothing on it, just the stock paddle, tungsten tape on the top, middle, and bottom, just an overgrip, so no hesicore grip. And lastly, I tested it with um, a hesicore grip. I actually tried out two versions of the hesicore grip with this. I tried out the elongated white grip, which is Selkirk's second thinnest model. And I also tested out this with the pink one, which is Selkirk's thinnest overgrip. Ultimately, what I found with my setups and testing is with this paddle, I preferred less is more. So what I mean by that is I do not think tungsten tape is necessary for this paddle. And let me explain why. This paddle is a really, really light paddle. And if you're just putting on a bunch of tungsten tape on it for more power, just buy a power paddle then. Just buy a heavier paddle if you want, if you want more of that. But I think the true gem of this paddle is that it's so lightweight that I'm just keeping it with no tungsten tape at all. The elongated white version is a little bit too thick for my taste. I prefer the pink one because it's the thinnest one. Currently what I'm playing with right now is just an overgrip on the paddle. And let me just pause right here real quick to talk about the overgrip. Overgrip, whether you use Hesicore or no Hesicore or whatever, just trust me on this. Get the U-Drip overgrip. I've tested dozens of overgrips and this is by far the best one because it is stretchier more tacky and it lasts way longer than any of the other overgrips that I've tried. Just trust me on this, you can thank me later. This overgrip, put it on any paddle and it transforms the feeling of the paddle. You have way more control because you don't have to squeeze as hard anymore and just stays in your hand. But um, I highly recommend you drip in overgrips for any setup, whether you're using Hesicore or not. Oh. Yeah. All right, baby paddle. <sighs> All right, well, I'll put all the links of what I talked about down in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.